Alrighty. So, after quite a bit of fiddling, I'm able to get a something pretty cool set up, I think. Um, we're still just in like a learning, seeing what's possible phase. Um, but I've got, as with the previous video, my forest has been replaced with the PCG forest. Um, and tonight's objective was to get a PCG forest graph spawning another sort of what I call, I guess, a smart PCG object, which will handle its own sort of, uh, sub spawning. And so in this case, um, just for sort of simplicity, we have, uh, trees that spawn mushrooms around them. And, uh, for further information on this, even if the, the tree will spawn upright, but the mushrooms will spawn sort of uh, relative to the uh, normal of the terrain in a circle around the tree uh, with their own individual offsets uh, and the tree has its own offsets. But not only is that being used by the PCG over here, I also have an individual actor object that can utilize the same PCG graph and so basically I've got a PCG just for a tree called tree with stuff that will spawn a random big tree and then also place mushrooms on the terrain around said tree um, and so we'll go over what I did how I did that um, and uh, yeah we'll dive right in so Ended up doing a lot of fiddling around uh, and watched a cool video by uh, Adrian Logut, who's a tools programmer at Epic. Recommend his stuff. I need to go watch some more of it. But just a quick shout out to him. Um, and we have a couple key components here. Our base graph is going to be PCG tree with stuff. And I went ahead and added a custom input pin on it to just take that's a that's a PCG point called tree spawn point. Um, and I only want a single point in that. And then from there, we're gonna grab landscape data and let me get rid of that. We're gonna project the point down onto the landscape. Um, and then, we're going to sample the surface. I went ahead and set the bounding shape to the tre tree spawn point. So right now my spawn points are kind of sized to the tree. Um, and so uh, that will give us a radi uh, the radius of the spawn point will, the size of the spawn point will basically be like how much terrain we're going to sample that we were not sampling everything. Um, and we're going to go ahead and transform the point. And so in this case, what we're going to do is I have one transform point that is not absolute. So it will basically sink the tree into the terrain. If it was absolute, it would just go down regardless of the slope of the terrain. But if the terrain is kind of sloped, then it's also going to like sink it into the terrain along the normal. So it should help kind of embed root balls a little bit better on steeper terrain. Um, and then after we do that, we go ahead and add our randomized rotation, uh, you know, a little bit of waggle there. Spawn our static meshes. Uh, I've got an array of static meshes that I pulled from somewhere. And I've got some, a little bit of weighting on them. Nothing crazy. This is a dead tree, I believe. So I wanted it to be, yeah, less common than the live trees. Um, and so, uh, then after that point, we've got our, uh, we're going to sample the surface of the terrain within that point. Then we're going to calculate the distance from the point. We've got these, these sample surface points here to a target. And we're going to go ahead and grab the sin. I'm grabbing the center of the target. So the 
the origin of that point after I projected it to the terrain. And I want to figure out a better way to get this set up, but for now, we won't worry about it. Uh, probably, I wonder if I can grab the bounds of the point, target point coming in. That would probably be useful. Um, that would be cool. Anywho, not going to jack with that right now. And we set a uh, density and then on that, and then we're going to take the density filter here. And I'm, this is sort of a magic number right now, but I'm grabbing um, a 5% of band, right? So we're grabbing a narrow ring of points in that, and that gives me uh, sort of my mushroom spawn points. And now that we've got the points, we're going to do a little bit of a transform on them. We're going to wiggle them around. I'm not sure this is needed anymore since I'm currently capturing and sampling the surface, but whatever. Um, I'm sinking them down because I kind of want my mushrooms kind of like more in the ground. Um, later, I'd love to look at adding a, um, uh, a static mesh that's like a, a dirt mound to sort of represent like the mushroom breaking through the ground, but that might be excessive <laughs> and unneeded. Uh, but, uh, and after we add our random, random variant, random scale, um, random rotation. Oh, hey, look at that. I don't have random rotation. I should totally do that. So we're going to do negative 5, negative 5, negative 1, 80, 5, 5, 180. And uh, we'll save on that. And then we're spawning, you know, if you watch the other video, same thing, nine different mushrooms. This one right here, which is like the biggest, most obvious one, I still wanna have, but I have, I have a low weighting on that. And then the, the two that I want most commonly, I've got like set at 10 weighting, then all the rest here are set at like five. So um, one nice cool thing was, if you have this set up in another PCG, you can right click copy your mess entries in one PCG and paste it in another which was nice for me not having to type it in a million times. So um, the result of that is we get, and then I've got two different setups. I've got a blueprint that can spawn it. And then I have another PCG graph, which spawns it. And I need to rename some of these because at first I was trying to spawn actors and that was giving me some difficulty because I want to use merge actors, but after you fuse merge actors, then the actor no longer has, because originally I was just getting the transform of the actor in the world, but if you merge actors, that transform goes away. <laughs> and then if you don't merge actors, then you have a bazillion actors, and that's super bad for performance. Um, and I was fiddling around with it, and I was like, well, maybe I can make a PCG tree graph. And so the important thing here is that this PCG tree with stuff has an input spawn point. Um, this was sort of the game changer here. And then over here in my uh, PCG forest actors graph, where we go through and we do all the sampling and all the spawning of all the stuff, rather than doing a static mesh spawner, in this case, I'm just gonna spawn my subgraph and I'm gonna pass my transform points that come out of here into my tree spawn point here, right? And so the size of these and, and, the rota and the, all that stuff in here is going to give me the, uh, what you saw on the other graph. And the nice thing with this is we're not creating new actors here. So it's actually, it was much faster when I moved to this as well. Um, and then Etc. And then I made a separate graph that has a subgraph that is designed to be used on a blueprint. And in this case, hey, we get actor actor data self, right? And then we convert that to a point, and then we pass that point into the tree spawn point graph. And uh, that makes that really simple. Uh, and so that way, we have a big 
PCG Forest, which, you know, uses, uh, which is using the, the graph. But I also have, oh, let me see here. Uh, move to PCGs. Tree with stuff, the actor here, which is a blueprint and it's a simple one. And all the blueprint does is sets the PCG graph here. And then I've got it set so the construction script here will generate local with a force on based on the video I was watching. And so this would mean if I did ever spawn this blueprint at runtime, let's say we were doing like a choppable tree or something like that, where we're gonna, like whatever, um, or some kind of resource gathering or whatever, um, that it would spawn and then it would generate the local, um, it would generate its PCG graph. So, but yeah. So we've got a single actor where if you move it around, it will randomize itself and spawn its mushrooms, cuckoo, and then every freaking large tree in the forest right now is spawning a mushroom ring around it. I think what I'd actually do in this case, I think it'd be cool if some of them did this a little bit, but rather than mushrooms spawning roots relative to the terrain for each one, right? Dropping pine cones, that kind of stuff. And so all of the accoutrement that go with a big tree in the woods um, can be handled by the individual tree graph. And then the bigger PCG sort of biome forest graph only has to worry about uh, major placements. And so let's say, for example, with like the rocks here, these rocks could be their own PCG graphs and maybe have little little rocks that intersect with the mesh, but also intersect with the terrain. Um, I haven't gone in and done profiling of any of this, but this scene is running pretty all right because I'm running Lumen in this big ass scene and I haven't done any optimization pass and I obviously have a lot of density here and I'm recording and I'm only on a 2080. So, uh, you know, my density could probably, <laughs> probably drop a little bit and I haven't, you know, done any uh, H LOD baking or construction or anything like that or any uh, streaming optimization. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully you enjoy that, right? We've got uh, one blueprint and two PCG graphs and then the forest PCG graph and uh, um, pretty exciting. I'd like, to, I'm, I'm interested in seeing kind of how deep we can go with some of these. Uh, I wanna play around with the idea of a PCG graph that analyzes an area and then says, hey, this part of the area is forest and this part is like a meadow and this part is this and forest and meadow and snowy forest and all that stuff are their own subgraphs, right? And then I can reuse my subgraphs everywhere. So yeah. Thanks for watching. I think I'm going to go to bed a little earlier tonight <laughs> instead of one or two in the morning. So toodaloodle.